Um, I feel like there's no sort of introduction needed, but uh, yikes, welcome to this series of thank interviews. You. Thank you, thank you. Um, going to be an insight into your creative process. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of drawing, I'm, I think I'm quite um, lucky to have, to have seen your sketchbooks and your notebooks and the drawings that are in um, those, those, those sort of pages that lead to your larger works. Mm -hmm. And it makes me aware... For someone whose work seems like there's an element of necessary spontaneity, mm. there obviously is like a lot of that back work that goes into informing your work. So what role does sketching and, and drawing play in, in your work? Uh, yeah, it's kind of like the blueprint, really. I think I kind of come up with most of the sort of directions of how I want my work to necessarily go through making a mess on paper first. Um, and a lot of it, again, it's the same sort of process to how I kind of paint. It's just kind of whatever is coming out of my mind effectively. And it doesn't necessarily, like, it's even better with drawing because these are, like I said, it's like a blueprint. I have, like, several books just full of nonsense effectively. And, you know, I kind of filter through that and kind of decide what I want to pull apart from that and kind of... Um, develop and elaborate on and like I said, a lot of it's just bullshit <laughs> a lot of it's just <laughs> nothing it's just kind of a way to warm up to um yep. i haven't even you know it's been a while since i've actually done this too i'm probably a little bit rusty but like again that's the whole point it's like be rusty get yep. out the rust effectively <laughs> and kind of like it, i don't even need to create something from it either it's it's a warm-up thing i think a lot of artists do that too a lot of people um you know, like, just to start, you know, and it's kind of like, it's the best way to do it, you know, you don't have to, I mean, you can have some kind of idea that you want to, like, effectively kind of plan out, but that's how I come up with my ideas, effectively, I don't necessarily think about them first, I just kind of play around. Is there, is there kind of an, I don't know, I don't know if the word's quite right, but autopilot, or, you know, is there an intuition um, in terms of how, how it works? how a sketch might start your 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 paintings your 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 wider work often combines the obviously quite sort of fantastical otherworldly aspects mm -hmm. with little bits and pieces that connect back to the real world when you're sketching is it is that the sort of same thing or are you generally just starting from the line and the the movement yeah kind of just from like the line like a lot of the time when i do sketch like i will actually lay down color first similar kind of process I'll just throw it in it'll just be you know like maybe some watercolor and just like chuck a little bit and make like a shape it's almost easier when I do that because effectively that's how I paint now too it's um once I've kind of like got a background effectively sort of like put down I'll do a similar process where I'll just like let my intuition work and kind of just throw it in um but with this I definitely I definitely kind of, there's, yeah, I jump between both, you know, like if there's no <clears throat> imagery already there from like the watercolour, I'll just kind of like put it there as if it was anyway, you know, like this is the same sort of process. It's like if I have colour in there, I'll be working and like filling in bits and sort of marks that that's made, but like I don't need to have it there effectively either. Right. Is it is it to some degree uh, about creating a, a sort of starting point that maybe otherwise you wouldn't necessarily have or is it all is it partly kind of problem solving you know figuring out well oh, this works and this doesn't work or is it kind of all after the point yeah i don't know it's kind of like a bit, a bit of all of it really like it depends like depends on my mind at that time too like you know like when i start doing this sort of stuff there'll be like three or four drawings and the last one might be one that I'm like cool with the rest of them is just like figuring out bullshit and kind of just again it's like 
it's more of an exercise than a, than like trying to get to a like final result too. It's always like I don't know. Like sometimes I do find myself in my like, oh, am I just wasting time? Could right. I be doing something <laughs> like something you know like because it's like you know if I already sort of have that's when I'm like oh if I've already got an idea like why am I drawing it? And so that's where I almost kind of go and be like nah, I'd like to draw when I don't have an idea. Right. If I don't have something that I like want to actually pursue, it's like cool. I'll just go to that it's also it's definitely like where the therapeutic side to like working comes in i think is just doing this kind of thing because i'm not having to like really think i'm just kind of going with whatever my hand is doing to it's like i don't necessarily feel feel like i have full control over it right yeah so an automatism 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 um yes i'm gonna sound sound like i (laughs) don't know what i'm talking about um that obviously, you know, there's more of that kind of element, I guess, when you're using a fluid medium like watercolor, right, to lay down those colors because physically there's kind of a nature. With with a pen, you know, we tend to think that there's a very intentional quality to it, right? Because, you know, you're the the pen traces the line that you make. Mm. But you're you're sort of talking maybe that you are <clears throat> almost sort of letting go in a way or or allowing the movement to kind of be created based on what's going on the page is, yeah. is that yeah it's how you describe it like i mean the way i put lines down too is very kind of like not gestural but like I've, i trust my hand you know what i mean like i and even if it's wrong the next step makes it right it's like i i always i you know i kind of stole that concept too is like that's a music a musician's kind of like way of playing sometimes it's like i think it was on like a I don't know, it might have been like a Miles Davis documentary or something that I watched where I sort of heard them talking about how, you know, like, I think it was like he was talking about like Herbie Hancock playing the piano and how like he would make a wrong note, but that following note corrected it. Mm. And I think that's the case for a lot of painting too and drawing. It's like you kind of have to just let it go. You just have to kind of like work with it. And you can make a mistake, but like, a lot of the time, too, you're going to be the only one that knows that's a mistake. And yeah. if you've corrected it with the next kind of mark or whatever, then nobody's ever going to know kind of thing. And yeah. even yourself, you kind of convince yourself that actually I was supposed to do that. I mean, even just looking at what you've put to paper so far, there's there's definitely, I think, a sort of echo of of the idea of music. You know, like the, the type of line, yep. the, the, the curving line and the sort of rise and, and fall and, and, you know, things overlapping on each other, which does, as you've sort of touched on, I think, relate a lot to sort of what you hear a lot of jazz musicians sort of talking about, right, that that particular approach, that particular type of music. But mm-hmm. it feels like a very musical um, kind of approach. And you've talked about how important music is um, to you in the past in terms yeah. of, you know, being on when you're, when you're doing it, when you're making work. Yeah. Um, and I guess, you know, musicians, certain musicians might um, have that idea that, you know, your, your end product comes from, you know, jam sessions and, and sort of just allowing the freeform aspect of, yeah. to, to create. Um, is there something, because I guess your paintings have, I feel like, often sought to increase in scale, and whether that's mm. painting a wall, obviously, or in your studio works, which mm-hmm. have, have over the years, I th- you know, started to expand in scale. Drawing often is a smaller sort of scale. How, how does that change, that transition? Because your movements would be smaller. But yeah. then you've got so many detailed parts yeah. as well in paintings that I guess allow you to, sh- to move back down as well. Yeah, it's almost like it just happens, to be honest. Eh? Like, <clears throat> I've sort of been able to um, translate the two, like, like one from the other. Um. I think too because like how I used to sort of paint was very much how I used to draw. You know, when I used to sort of use like a lot of like um, random outlines for oh, even over like something that's a recognizable image, I would um, <clears throat> I would outline it like similar to this. And again, it's that freestyle kind of just letting it kind of happen. There's no specific like direction for it. It's um, again, it can be really. Um, random and there can be mistakes too that can be corrected by the following kind of lines but 
it's just a different approach. Like I think I approach my larger works a little different now because I um I've sort of gone into more of a sort of realism surrealism as opposed to cartoon surrealism. So and there's still that there though. Like it's still something I do work on, but I also think because I've because of the way my paintings are in my studio they're not like this either. They, 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 they have gone in that direction too of the more kind of um, realism. To, the bits that are realistic are more realism than kind of cartoony. Um, and I don't know why. It just kind of started happening. I kind of was like, okay, I want to I move on from this sort of style. And But again, I'm also bringing it back in as well. So it's like I take breaks from certain styles, I think, and then just kind of start merging it back into what I'm doing uh, at present time. When you talk about the, the sort of increased realism aspect that's coming into your, I guess, surrealism, is that something that you find changes the way you draw? Like, I, I kind of feel like realism often requires a sort of practice and you know refinement um, as opposed to that sort of more dreamlike surrealism where you can be guided by maybe something else. Mm. So do you do you try and do that as well? You do you sketch to to work on representative representational uh, imagery as well? Kind of, kind of because it's but also not probably as much as you would think because I um it's a different it's a different process when you like painting something realistic like the way I look at it is completely different to the way I look at something that I'm just kind of coming up with out of my mind, obviously. Like, I will, when I'm thinking of things that I want to paint, like, I will put them down real rough, and then I'll, um, I'll get it to a level where I know that, like, you know, like, I can um, paint it effectively and not have to kind of make it up on the spot as I go, but then I'm also using, like, more reference imagery, more imagery that is is real, effectively, that I'm taking from certain things and then warping it and sort of like creating my own version of it to some degree because I mean for it to be like realistic too it does need to be coming from a reference essentially um but again I take those little elements and then make them how I want them but it's a different completely different process it's a different way I even look at something like when I'm painting something that's like realistic I often just stare at it for ages and just kind of like break down certain elements of it so that I can sort of see what it needs to look like as opposed to just making this shit up on the spot like this effectively. So it's totally different like process. Like I almost feel like it's different. It's two different versions of me as an artist doing it too because I've always been able to do it. Like paint sort of not, you know, I'm not saying I've always been able to paint um, realism or anything, but I've I've been able to draw things and paint things as they are, as a as well as complete nonsense as well. So, yeah, it's two different it's two different versions. I think. Did that sort of manifest later on? Like, I'm just wondering about growing up. You know, a lot of people you talk to who are creatives as adults, you know, talk about how much time they would spend just drawing and, mm. um, you know. Sp- by themselves often um you know that was that something that you did a lot as a kid as well yeah it's all I did really um yeah it's that's the thing too like for a long time I just drew other things I, I it's like a pre- it's, it's it's kind of the way you you kind of need to, to do it I think because for me to understand how to paint things that aren't realistic or surreal effectively, not necessarily unrealistic, but like you do need to have an understanding of like how to paint things as they are. You need to almost be able to break that down first, I think, you know, it might not be the case for everybody, but for me it was. And so like, yeah, just basically drawing things that were not even that interesting either, you know, like when I look at it, I'm like, still life bores the shit out of me, but like, <laughs> it's good to know how to do those things because once you have that understanding of that you can kind of push off from that and I think that's what happened for me naturally it wasn't even something I planned to do like I um I you know I think like if I was to find a bunch of my artworks even stuff from like high school it was boring as fuck like it's really just kind of ticking the boxes type painting like but again that's not a bad thing 
that's I, I think that was a good thing. I think like I needed to be able to do that and it's understand foundation. The, yeah, the, understand those mediums that I was using. Like I would play around with a bit of oil, and also just you know like learning composition and stuff like that, and 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 color theory and all that sort of stuff. Like it might not seem that exciting at the time, but like when you can like understand those things, you can kind of run wild with it, really. Well, speaking of foundations, because obviously you have both a uh, formal arts training. And of course, you also have your background in graffiti. Mm -hmm. How important was sketching as part of your graffiti background? Oh, massive, eh? Massive. Because I think those that's where there's this big similarity with with just like, you know, conventional painting and painting, even painting graffiti for sure. Like, um, you kind of need to like work that stuff out before you go and approach wall. You know, you need to like, you kind of need to have a, a fair idea of what you're doing in terms of, especially if you're doing like pieces and stuff like throw ups, it, it, same for throw ups and tagging too. Like you don't just go out and do it and or, or automatically like know what you're doing. And even a lot of people that do it in books still don't know what they're doing too. Yeah. And me, that was me for a long time too, because like you can't, it is a different thing trying to translate, you know, a book to, to a wall. It's, but it's like a good workplace to start. And so like, you know, like I would have, you know, several black books just full of like, pieces and stuff like that because i'm sort of again working it out completely different thing when it comes to actually painting them but like that's still you know that's i think that's how it needs to be because it, it, like i said it's you know it's a different it's a whole different ball game when you're really doing it but like if i didn't do it in a book i'd have absolutely no idea where to start and i think too like sketchbooks and stuff like that is it's where you don't have that pressure either and so like sometimes it is good in terms of like being able to like figure out things without the pressure of like oh, I've got to like think about this while I'm painting this or like you know like it's good to have it all again another blueprint really and it's interesting eh? because I think with graffiti as you've already touched on you know from a tag to a throw up to a piece there's a different aspect of drawing in each of those you know a tag is in I touched on this in another interview with um, someone. You know, there's there's this idea of kind of muscle memory or or the flow of you know how you get from point A to point B and you know, the feeling of it. Mm. When you start to create larger pieces, obviously the drawing changes because you actually have to create the the infrastructure and mm. the bones behind it. Um, how different is the process of sketching? A concept for a piece in a note in a sketchbook from sketching on a wall um, <coughs> and doing a larger detailed piece um I mean they definitely have their differences for sure it's like if you can sort of understand it's I think the fundamental part of it is understanding like the space understanding like okay like you've got this amount of space and you want this to fit in the way you want it to fit in you often for me I will look at it in a similar way with a book like if you can't figure out like the spacing in the book and make your letters essentially sit where they need to sit, you're not going to be able to do it on a wall either. Like if you can't understand that composition and that sort of area of space that you've got to work with, then yeah, you're going to have a real hard time. And so I think like there's definitely like that's kind of where that whole element of like figuring it out comes in. It's not even necessarily what you're doing. It's like figuring out, cool, I've got this amount of area. I need to learn how to like piece things together to make it to make it work on a wall too. So uh, yeah, it's it's probably. I mean, I think for me, I can't speak for other people, but like for me, that was one of the main things I found I was able to achieve with you doing things in a book was like, cool, I can figure that out. Then I can sort of look at a wall in a similar concept, and I still do to like in terms of like doing large scale murals too, like. It's a similar process. Obviously, there's, you know, we have different ways of kind of like putting something on a wall now, whether it's um, with a, you know, projector or through grids or whatever. But like initially, I would just go and do it in a, s a similar way I would put it in my book. And it didn't always work out. Like, it's not to say that like that actually works all the time. But like, it's definitely something that I think um, helped in the long run. When it comes to to tools, um, the the pen you're using at the moment mm -hmm. has been very visible in, in some of your other than like your larger paintings. Often, yeah. um, you sort of 
have this very elegant ability to to use fine line. Yeah. How does that translate in different forms? Because I think, um, you know, the 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 fineness is really key. Um, is line w- weight uh, elements like that? Is that something that you're quite interested yeah, well, in and um, involved in? Yeah, it's like I figured out how to like. I mean, this is a point three. I can make it look like a one or whatever. Um, yeah, I figured out how to sort of. It's 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 all about pressure too, and that's what translated into using spray paint. It's like figuring out. You know, not in the same way either. It's like obviously you you know like for this sort of sort of stuff when I was doing it with spray paint I would have little tricks and and whatnot to get the paint to work the way I wanted that I could produce skinny lines and it wasn't even through like a special cap at all and there's a lot of people out there that know what I'm talking about I I won't give away (laughs) too much but you know like if you know you know that there's ways you can manipulate the can and that's pretty much how because yeah because I would you know for a long time you know I would do this sort of line work and not even necessarily with um doing pieces and stuff this probably came into effect more with like my kind of um character stuff and just the random things that i would paint it was i figured out how to like take this quite like loose line work and translate it into my sort of larger work but it was always kind of me yeah trying to replicate what i was doing with the pen right you talked as well about like the painstaking time a lot of that pen work would take yeah. in some of your paintings from certain periods what were some of the you know what what were we, what were some of the sort of time frames that you might look at when you're when you're detailing a oh, hours, an image man. hours like i got lost in it too that it, it came down to like you know like it actually like coming so time consuming i could work you know like on a section like this small and be doing it for hours and hours and hours because like I was using to like I go smaller than this I go like zero point zero five for the real like needle sort of like work effectively and yeah it takes forever and like <laughs> I liked it though like it was a it was sort of I don't know there was no real like reason for me to like stop and I haven't like I'm actually working on something now that is literally back in that style it just took a break from it I just kind of like to jump between things and not just be doing the same thing all the time and you know like it does you know this can take its toll on your hands too like it's definitely right. something that like you know, i have like issues with kind of like rsi a little bit in my hand and so like for me to keep continuously working like that was just not going to work and i often i actually sort of felt like the the line work got more like sketchy as such because it was like painful yeah so right. like it was actually like oh this is like this i'm going like spazzing out because it's fucking hurting <laughs> well because there's a, there's a fluidity right and if that fluidity is affected that affects the way that the image is going yeah. to look yeah but again too like the, i would i would create stuff uh that i could outline that it wouldn't matter right. that actually that sort of became like oh that works actually even better than me trying to be like real precise with what i'm doing and like make it clean lining it's like i actually kind of liked it as well like i liked the way that that was becoming to show itself that like yeah that that sort of rough line work is actually kind of like quite fitting for the imagery as well when you you talk about you know going between styles and stuff like that how often will you revisit sketchbooks and and hunt out ideas that maybe you weren't aware of when you were either drawing them or, or using them as reference first time yeah pretty often i guess like I have a lot of them and so to be honest it sort of gets to it's like I'll fill a book you know like I have like a yearly book type of thing where I try and fill the whole book in that year um I did notice the last book took nearly three years to fill (laughs) because I kind of that was when that was that transition as like I'm moving I've got what I wanted to get out I spent a lot of time just kind of like working in the books just sort of figuring it out and then kind of got to a point where I think I've worked out enough here that I can translate this into the studio stuff. It was always the studio stuff. It's, it's never really been the walls. I don't work like that when I go and paint a wall effectively. Like if I have an idea, I'll, I kind of just use like procreate now and I'll just 
roughly sketched that out and then I again have that element of like just freestyling what actually comes out. It's like I never really go into something with a full, unless it's a job, with a full blown sort of like uh, coloured, you know, sketch of it effectively. It's it's sort of, I feel like stressed out if I try and do that. And I feel like if I'll, there's a really high chance I'm just going to like change it anyway. So it's sort of, it seems a little bit pointless to, 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 paint something first and then go and paint it on a wall it's like I'll take parts of that put that on the wall and then just let intuition kind of run wild a bit too because it's kind of how I paint and it's almost like because I paint like that so much it's, it feels like I'm forcing something if I don't or I'm holding something back effectively if I don't you mentioned procreate what is the difference between you know drawing by hand and using those digital tools how do you get the same satisfaction from a digital render as you mm. do from, you know, actually putting pen to paper? Mm, I don't know. I, I, nah, like, there's something about knowing that you can erase something that changes the way you draw it. I often find myself, like, I, I'm i like, it's like, because I, I can delete something with a push of a button, I'm sort of drawing differently. You know, like there's a billion mistakes in what I've just done here already but like it doesn't matter in that respect but like if it's procreate I'm like oh I can fix it I can just do that and then I'll I'll have get nothing done right you know what I mean like it'll take me longer because I'm still sort of holding back like that but um it's just good for me in terms of um I guess you know like not having to have every single color on on hand in terms of like because I if I, you know, if I wasn't using Procreate to do something like that in the past, I've just used like watercolors to to do it, and it's 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 a different um, result than what it is on <clears throat> the wall, but there's similarities to it. But um, with Procreate, it's kind of I've just found it good for just it's like you know there's <clears throat> there's an element of like me kind of adding in, especially if it's something like I'm taking a like realistic element like f some flowers or whatever or like something that's already there i'm not going to necessarily draw it i can paint it so it's like i don't need to draw it i can find the right image put it into what i'm doing and then paint it as it is like that's where that whole reference thing kind of comes in again it's like taking references that are like realistic just putting them there because it's like yeah and it's like i mean people might see that as like cheating to some degree but it's like i can draw them if i want but like why not just cut time in half a little bit for certain things like that? It's mm. for me. I just like I don't care. I don't need to prove to anyone that I can paint them. It's like I can, and it's just a you know, it's just using technology to your advantage too, to some degree. I think. But what's your take? This is a little bit off topic, but it's something that's quite um, pervasive at the moment. But you know that that rise of sort of AI to you know create imagery and stuff, which is sort of removing. Strangely enough, through technology, the technical kind of aspects mm. of, of what you do, I feel like it's not something that really affects you because you are creating your own kind of world in mm. a way. Um, you know, you, even though you're using elements of, of representation and, and realism, you know, you're 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 depicting a world that is definitely your own uh, and is unmistakably so. But you know, do you have any do you fall on any side of, of where this might all lead in terms of creativity? Um, I haven't. I'm yet to use use it. Um, I know some people that have, and I think it's pretty cool. I think for me, it's like I don't know. I see it as like a similar thing to like the whole idea of like is using a projector cheating. It comes down to can you paint it without it? You know, if you, if you can, then who cares? You know, like, but if you have to use a projector to do something, or you know, if you have to trace something, then I don't know. Then you know, like, are you, where, where's the real kind of? I mean, not to say that it's, there's no skill there still. It's like where's the challenge as well? But um, I think with the AI thing, it's like you can, you know, again, it's it sort of comes like I said, it comes down to can you paint it? It's like if you put something into an AI and like it spits out some imagery you go and paint that and you paint it really well, I still think that's pretty sweet. It's it's if you're like eliminating a process of like 
having to kind of come up with the concept it's yourself it's like I still yeah it's it's I kind of jump between both it's like I still think it's good to be able to do that but also I think if you can utilize AI a little bit to help push that further and you paint then go and paint that then it's still I think that's still pretty cool as well because again it's like I mean yeah it's I, I, as long I think if you know that it could lead to creating some pretty awesome like artworks if those artworks are still being created by a human effectively I mean if you're you're still kind of coming up with the concept and the ideas around it but effectively you're just getting it put together for you mm. and it might and I mean I've seen some ones that are just bullshit too they don't really work <laughs> either so it's kind of I don't know I'm, I'm yet to really have a, a real opinion on it um yeah. I haven't used it yet and so I feel like and I and I plan to I just um I'm just kind of like playing around with some of the programs, essentially trying to find the right sort of one. But again, if I was to, I feel like for me, I would probably just pull out elements of what the AI is doing and still kind of add my version to it. It's almost more like a collaboration as opposed to letting it do it everything for me. It sort of feels a bit like the whole Neuralink, Neuralink kind of idea, right, of... of shortcutting that kind of process from the idea to something else. Mm. But yeah, in this case, I guess the interesting question is, is the concept and the explanation of the concept and then it being created, you know, like what is the, where does the human element uh, dis dissolve and the AI take over? Mm. You know, if that generally, I think one of the processes of creativity is <clears throat> realizing and executing, or, or sorry, conceiving, executing, and realizing an idea. Mm. And this sort of has the potential to remove part of that process, which both makes it all more accessible. You know, you you can go from point A to point C, yeah. and point B is a bit more of a mystery. Um, but then, of course, that goes against, I think, a lot of what the journey of, of being a creator is. Yeah. I feel lucky that, like, I have had grown up and learned things without it. Yeah. And I think, you know, there's obviously, it's that's the, te that's the technological age. It's like, I think, you know, our age group is on the, like, cusp of being able to see what it was like before and then, obviously, what it's going to be like in the future, whereas, you know, up, you know future artists they're going to have that at their fingertips and I mean, like whether or not you know I, I I still have hope in the sense of like future generations still wanting to know about like past ways of creating things I guess that becomes like an element of art history then you know you go like you learn about the older masters and how they worked and stuff too it doesn't necessarily mean you go and replicate how they worked or whatever but like just the knowledge of it I think is hmm. important I think it just becomes interesting in that it is almost taking the art as idea mm. beyond, you know, like it's all the, the sort of ultimate manifestation of art as idea. Um, and rather than going completely intangible and conceptual, it's like art as idea, but it's still a tangible outcome. It's just, not necessarily created by the hand in the yeah. same way. Yeah. Yeah. Um in terms of your um painting uh I guess as a as a broad uh I hate to use the word journey. But <laughs> <laughs> we often talk about this and that, you know, the evolution of your work mm -hmm. is is quite kind of visible I think you know you can see where things have come from and where they've focused in and pulled in and pulled out um yeah. and everything like that how do you how do you relate that idea to maybe the way that you're kind of and again cringe word but you know how your brain works mm -hmm. do you do you kind of have you ever thought about the the whether or not you'd classify what you do as sort of logical or illogical, because it feels like mm. there's elements of both. Yeah, there's definitely elements of both. I think it's a battle in a, in a way. Like, it's kind of like, I would say I'd teeter on the edge of reality a little bit. So, <laughs> like, 
it's you know like it's it is it's a battle it's it's kind of like i don't know i think it's an age thing too as well you know like like I'm, you're a different person the next day kind of thing the way i look at it like so that for me because i do this full time as well there's a lot more information um there's more kind of there's more to see I think, um, and for me to be comfortable with what I do, I have to continue to challenge myself as well. I just the type of person that couldn't paint or draw the same thing forever, um, and because I've always kind of gone between, you know, like liking, I like a lot of different stuff as well. So, like, because there's sort of, like, for me, there's the element of, like, yeah, I don't know, I just don't want to be comfortable, you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to feel like, oh, yeah, sweet, that's that's me now, and I'm just going to run with this. It's like, I have to stay open-minded about my own work, as well as others, too, you know? Like, <clears throat> I don't want to, I don't know, I don't ever want to be boxed into any kind of style, either, really, like, to any kind of, like... Um, one thing so like I said it's sort of a battle that I kind of have and it's probably more internally than anything but like the result of that battle gets shown in my work I think does it do you see a difference in terms of a painting a larger painting that you're producing having a finishing point and I won't say being finished mm -hmm. because I think you probably don't think in that way i think yeah. for you like you know there's always a point where you stop and step away but it's not necessarily that that yeah. it's finished but it feels like your drawing would always be uh sort of just an annotation of that time and would i i, I hazard to guess that you never think of a drawing as finished either but yeah. even less so than a than a painting 100 yeah definitely never finish i don't think anything i ever really do there's a finishing point it's like like it's more or less like me just being like you're gonna ruin it stop <laughs> like that's literally just the only like thing that stops me or there does get to a point like and it's not a finishing point it's like i'm i've put enough into something that i think i got the point across for myself um hence why i've always worked on several things at once too because Sometimes when you're like, because I don't know, like the way my thought process when I'm painting and drawing a lot of times, it's like having a conversation with myself to a certain degree and like having, you get to a point where your conversation's finished, you said everything that you need to say, but sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll have like different kind of, um, I guess, thought patterns arise from me working on something so therefore having multiple works because i can translate that into something else start that conversation there and just leave it to sort of brew for a bit and then kind of go to that so that's where it's like important for me to have several sort of things going because and i didn't always work like that and then you can sort of see it like it's chaos otherwise it's like trying to control chaos and so like the way i control my chaos is to move it around not just have it all on one one thing and like mm -hmm. even this this alone too is probably a good example of of just f having chaos happen in one image it's all going to be just this there's no there's not going to be any there's not going to be any kind of like other work like this that i'm going to do today that's going to like necessarily kind of relate to this like if i was doing this in a book at this point to, and by now i would have probably switched over and gone because i would have seen something in this that i want to elaborate on and started with that but also like it's kind of cool to not be able to do that and to just like have to like put up with it just <laughs> kind of do it have you do you with your sketchbooks do you obviously retain them? You obviously retain them for your mm -hmm. own reference. Mm -hmm. Do you ever think about, you know, potentially making them into something? You know, I've I know of artists who have you know turned sketchbooks into publications mm -hmm. and or exhibitions and things like that. Do you ever think about your drawings being seen in that public light, or are they 
yeah, sort of kept away. I've done I've done I've done it with a zine. I made a little zine a couple of years back, which was basically that was kind of like based around the quarantine. I just did like a bunch of drawings in that and like was I kinda of like these. I might just like, you know, create a small kind of yeah, small book on them. But yeah, I I have and I probably will. Um for me that's gonna happen probably a little later down the down the line and I think it'll be a combination of um sketch stuff as well as paintings i think mm. you know i want to create a book at some point but i want to have a big book yeah. <laughs> i want a lot there to be a lot in it and so i think and i would like to also be able to have um it very you know like the whole journey of it effectively to be noticed in that too i want there to be you know years worth of work and just sort of see that transition from styles and back to certain styles apparent in the book yeah so yeah i think you know like <laughs> there'll be some selected too because a lot of it's pretty a lot of it's pretty dark a lot of it's pretty <laughs> messed up but again that's kind of like the beauty of it it's like you can have books like that that i you know i still show people but like i don't necessarily explain what they are i mean i never really have with my paintings either but yeah and i guess as you say if the works are representative of those changes and the sort of evolution over time then you know that idea of showing all those sides is is really important mm -hmm. to over over curated i guess would would not would mean a, a sort of a false view yeah in some regards right yeah for sure yeah i think it kind of has to sort of for me to be able to like feel comfortable with it too because it's like you know like it is putting your stuff out there online and I, I always have you know I've always kind of faced the music effectively like that with that but also like people take away one painting if they bought it you know and they I don't even explain it like <laughs> I don't even explain them to people that have necessarily bought them either I've never really had the need to and I've never felt anybody like want me to like dissect it that much either but having a whole book's worth of stuff is like there's an element that's kind of like, I guess, somewhat nerve wracking a little bit because like the paintings are the results of these things. These things are the real kind of like the, the drawings effectively are the real weird for me are the real weird ones. Like, the, you know, I refine the paintings, they're, they're versions of the stuff in the book. So like to, to show all of that too is going to take a little bit of, um, I guess like encouragement from myself. Yeah. To, but it again, it'll be selected too, you know, like not all of them will, will be in there. And... Yeah. Then I guess there's, there's those practical concerns as well, right. Of, of like how you replicate something because, you know, looking at this, there's definitely a sense that the line work is, uh, the fineness of the line work means that, you know, seeing it, where you can actually see the pen has made the mark in the in the paper, yeah. you know, is is an important aspect. Um, you'd have to also go through that sort of whole process of figuring out how you replicate that and yeah. how you create it. You know, you'd you'd want to ensure that the representation is is the best it can be. Yeah. Um, which again is something that you have to consider with your paintings as well, right? Particularly yeah. with your use of of you know pigments and yeah. and metallics and washes and things like that. Um, do you think of documentation of your work through photographs or through the work themselves? Like that, that, that they need to be viewed almost in person. Yeah, it's, it's always been a real hard one. Um, because I would not say my photography skills are great. Um, and I mean, I do get some of them professionally done. Like if I'm getting a work created into a print I get it professionally photographed and it's great like it really shows a lot of what um my photography can't show but again mm -hmm. it's a, it's it's a it's a relatively large cost as well for if because I, I paint a lot of paintings and so yep. um I have to factor that in too so yeah I I always am always going to think the works are always better viewed in person but I, I kind of feel like that for like all painting um yep. but you know like it's not always practical for that so 
if I can kind of find a nice balance between that, then that's good. And that's what having, you know, like good photography does help that. And so, um, it's, yeah, it's, I, I'm at peace with it. <laughs> like it is what it is. And like, you know, everybody can't view things in person. And especially for me too, like, you know, like once the painting's gone, it's gone. And I don't, I don't find myself like ever wanting to see the painting again. So like I have, I have photos, you know, but I don't go through them and I don't go and look at my photos and be like, oh, I did this and I like that and that worked. It's like I, if it worked, it's stuck in my mind. I don't need to look at it. Right. Um, but you know, like, yeah, it's, it's a hard one. Like I definitely could uh, do with like a photography course to like up my skills <laughs> a little bit. But I mean, there's, yeah, there's so much to it, right? Like lighting and, and, yeah, and yeah. how you actually understand the mechanism of film and, yeah and i'm just and like artwork, i'm analog man like i'm i'm analog when it comes to that sort of stuff and so like you know i'm just sort of in a digital world trying to fucking make it right but yeah it's it's definitely something that i think you know like i am definitely aware of it and i i think my my photographs aren't terrible but like that that could be better and i think you know especially if i'm going to start you know putting things together for a, a book I do need to um, up that a little bit, and I and I will. And the more the paintings progress, too, the more like apparent that's becoming because there's more detail in them. You know, there's more to pick up, especially like with my use of like metallic stuff and um, and you know the finer work. Because again, it's like viewing those works. You, the reason I feel like they are better in person is because a certain light changes the painting, as you've sort of seen in them too they can look one way in one set of lighting and then, you know, you switch the lighting a bit and it changes the whole painting. And so that's a hard thing to kind of relay in photographs unless it's done professionally as well. Um, so final, final, I guess, question. Um, you, I'm assuming you don't generally sort of, you know, title drawings. Never. <laughs> but if you were to... Give this the sketch a, a title based on what's been going through your mind. Yeah. What would you call it? Oh shit. <laughs> Probably that. Oh shit. <laughs> Help. Help. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, I don't know. Because because when I'm looking at it now, I haven't really been looking at it until like the last five minutes. Um. I kind of have to get it to a point where there's something going on and then I'm just kind of piecing other bits around it. Um, and it's, I mean, again, it's a self portrait. <laughs> it really is. eh? like, it's just, you know, like if you look at it, there's about three or four faces in there. Um, so I guess it's just a bit of me. I call it that a bit of me. Cause yeah. it sort of just is. They're just, it's the same process. It's just an extension of myself, my thought pattern or like, non-thought pattern I guess um and it's all just kind of pieced together around my name so yeah I would call it a piece of me <laughs> <laughs> cheers sweet